So now we're going to move into Darren Silver uh, from the Great Earth School. Darren has an MA, is a rite of passage guide, nature connected coach, ceremonialist, and innovative educator. He has over a decade of experience working with ritual wilderness skills and guiding transformational experiences residentially and internationally. A gifted storyteller and apprentice uh, to the old myths, Darren weaves the power of the natural world, vision, and community, and devotion to the remembrance of regenerative culture. I'll pass it to you, Darren. Hey, thank you. Um, I just want to start by it's it's just such an honor um, to be here and see all your faces or your names and um, where you are. It's just such a gift. And um, Simone, to hear about your project uh, is just so touching. And then um, Jeff, I believe. Um, I actually know Greg Petty's. Uh, if you're still on the call, I'm looking around. I don't know if I see your name, but um, yeah, there you are. Anyway, it's great to be here. Um, so what I wanted to do with my short bit of time um, is tell a little story. Um, would you all like to hear a story? Okay, I see some thumbs up, some yes. shots, smiles. All right. right. Um, I also want to thank Dan. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So once upon a time, once upon a time when um, 45 people tuned into their computers to see each other's beautiful faces, once upon a time in this place inside of our hearts, there was a village. And at the center of this village was a hut. And in the center of this hut was a woman. And she was pregnant and she was giving birth. And she was pushing and breathing and sweating. And it was right at that midnight hour, darkness all around. And she's pushing and breathing and sweating. And surrounding her are 12 grandmothers. And these grandmothers are looking in towards her, whispering the 10,000 secrets every woman must know before she gives birth. And surrounding those grandmothers were 12 grandfathers looking out. And they were calling in this one to come, to be born. They were calling in the Holy Spirit of everything. They were calling in and calling in. And outside of that ring was a ring of warriors making sure that all that came in was good medicine. And outside of that was the village. And the village was singing and rejoicing and dancing. And outside of that was the forest. And it was like a great wave that went back and forth between the people and the forest. This song, this heartbeat, this rhythm, and at the center was this young woman giving birth. And just at that moment, lightning struck the ground and a beautiful baby came into the world. Fresh from the other side, this baby thinks to itself, wow, I cannot wait to tell the people why I came here, what my gift is, the vision that I hold, what I can't wait to do. And just like you and I, this little one went to speak and all that came out was a cry. It was deep, beautiful, holy longing to share something magnificent with the world. And this little one thought, wow, I better learn the ways of my people. I better learn the ways of my people so I can bring my gift, so I can bring my genius, so I can bring my vision to the world. And in so doing, this child forgot what it had known from the other world. Now, when the time this one became a teenager. He or she or they remembered, began the process of remembering why they came here. 
So the story continues, actually. I don't have time to tell the whole story. I'll have to tell it to the, to the river outside my house when we get off this call. But the Great Earth School is that story right there. What is your vision? What is it you came into the world to give? The one of a kind thing, the thing that if you don't do it, it's just simply not gonna happen. Because the old stories always say that we came into the world with something unique that only we could give. Some call it your gift, some call it your vision, some call it your genius. And so what we do is we go through four stages, right? And the first one is embodiment. The first one is the physical. Can I actually be here? Can I be in my body? Can I like fully incarnate into the world? And that's a tricky thing, you know, because you can go, well, yeah, there's, there's my elbows and yep, there's my forearms and there's my cheekbones, but are we really fully here? <clears throat> So the whole first week is focused towards the physical and embodiment. One way I like to say it, and Dan actually, the tech host, experienced a little taste of this a couple of weeks ago, is most people are moving in a horizontal plane of a circle. They're in relationship with their body like a circle. But that first week is, can our awareness move from our physicality from a circle to a sphere. How does that happen? How does our awareness move from a circle to a sphere? The second one is wilderness. So we go out and we spend nine days in the wilderness um, and there's some solo time and fasting. Um, and that's beginning to develop those points of contact in the environment to develop a relate relationship with the landscape so that it too is no longer flat. So we can actually really navigate the environment. We learn tracking, awareness, wilderness living skills, fire by friction, pottery, basketry. And then the third one is the relational. So wow, I'm here and I'm in the world. And then the second one is, can I be in relationship with another? Can I fully be in relationship with you from the fullness of myself? Can I fully honor myself and honor you simultaneously? And what is the bridge between the two? What's the bridge between me and you? Yeah. Some of you may have heard of Tom Brown Jr. He's been my longtime teacher of 20 years, has a school called the Tracker School. And um, he would say when you would hang out with his teacher's people, um, they would sit around a fire for hours and not say a word, but they'd be giggling and then they'd be serious and then they would nod at each other. And then finally he said, what are you all doing? He said, oh, we're just, we're just having a conversation. We just don't need to do it with words. And so what is the space between? <clears throat> and then the last one is leadership. So let's say a glimpse of that magnificent thing called your gift, called you, emerges. How do you bring it out into the world in a way that is ergonomic to the vision that you carry? In other words, it has a beautiful place to fit in to the world. So, you know, I kind of showed up to this call like, like I was feeling like I was riding a horse with no reins or a saddle. I had no idea where I was going to go. I didn't mean to talk so um, wildly, I have no idea quite what I said. Um, and, but that's the program of the Greater School. And it's really the best that I've come up with for a modern initiation. In my master's program, I really looked at rites of passage. And rites of passage are an initiation into something called culture. And I'm not convinced that at least where I live, there is something called a culture. So it's like, what do we get initiated into? What is the rite of passage into? And so what I've come up with is like, well, maybe we can just learn how to be here. Maybe we can just learn how to be humans. Maybe we can learn how to be in conversation with the wild and with nature. I remember there was a, how much time do I have, Jake? 
Just uh, another 30 seconds or so. Okay. I remember when, um, when I was in school, I read this anthropological article, the Inuit woman, and, and, and her saying, yeah, we go to the shaman and to the medicine people when we can't hear the voices of the plants, when we can't hear the voices of the animals. So there's something about us like, what does it mean to just be a human? Can we just really be here and reawaken our awareness so we can be um, in connection with the whole of life? Um, so that's a little bit about the Great Earth School. It's out here in Colorado, um, in Eastern Colorado on the Front Range where the mountains meet the plains. And um, we create and cause, as the Irish would say, all kinds of good trouble. 